There is an old saying when it comes to astronomy, and particularly when it comes to deep sky objects, galaxies, nebulae, planetary nebula, and the like. That is, aperture rules. The bigger the aperture, the more you'll see. If you were to ask the astronomy wizards, what's the best telescope to buy? They'd all get together, them and the oracles. They'll probably come back and tell you, the best telescope is the one that you use the most. And I'm here to narrow that down a little bit. Because when it comes to aperture, we've got a lot of choices today. More than we've ever had before. And the prices are reasonable or at least affordable compared to the prices back in the day. So I brought out two telescopes here, a 12-inch Dobsonian Ultralight Explorer Scientific and this Hubble UL-16 Ultralight. Now the reason why I choose the Ultralights is to fall into that category of the one that gets used the most. Because if it's heavy, clunky, big, difficult to move, get it in and out of the house, into the car, you're probably not going to make that first criteria of the one that's used the most. So ultralights typically fall into the one that's used the most. So you may have been considering upgrading your aperture, maybe jumping from an 8 to a 10, or a 10 to a 12, or a 12 to a 16. And that's pretty much the way it goes when it comes to deep sky objects. All of us always want to see just a little bit more. Some say that the 16 is worth the extra effort, and some say that the 12 is good enough. Now I've had the 12 for quite a while, and I've got to agree with a lot of them that 12 inches of aperture is really the sweet spot. You can move it around easily, especially if it's an ultralight. There's several varieties of them available. Explorer Scientific, Hubble Optics, and Obsession, and probably one or two others out there. The point is, if you're going to larger aperture, I would strongly re recommend an ultralight, or at least one that you know you can take in and out of the car, in and out of the house, without making excuses for not taking it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about being under the starry sky. So tonight, I'm out here with these two wonderful Dobsonian telescopes, and I'm going to be comparing the two, kind of like a shootout, but hey. We know the 16 is going to win when it comes to light grass. The question is, how much better is it really? Is it really the extra money and the extra effort to set it up? Now this took about 30 minutes to set up. That's the dew shield, I got a leveling board, I've got my finder on there, and I've also got a shroud. This one took about 25 minutes. So they're basically pretty much the same amount of time to set up. However, even though this is an ultralight and it comes in at 60 pounds total, but that doesn't include the dew shield, it's supposed to be more portable than a conventional daub. And it definitely is. But the 12 is easier to handle. I got to tell you, it's much easier. It weighs about the same, but because of the smaller compact size, you can get it to you a lot easier. It's easy to get in and out of doors and twist or whatever you got to do. So this one definitely beats this when it comes to portability. Even though on paper they weigh close to the same, which is pretty amazing. And you got to hand it to Hubble Optics coming up with this sandwich mirror design. Pretty cool. But a 12 inch mirror doesn't take all that long. And if you have a fan on it, why, you could probably get it to acclimate within a reasonable amount of time. A 16-inch conventional mirror, that's another story. So, as the aperture goes up, these sandwich mirrors definitely have an advantage, not only weight, but reaching ambient temperature and keeping up with it throughout the night a lot quicker than a thick piece of quartz. So tonight, we're gonna put a 35 millimeter pan optic with a PVS-14 night vision monocular. And that's all I'm going to use tonight. That's a good eyepiece for night vision. It gives a good image scale, lets a lot of light in, and when it comes to nebulosity, it's a really nice eye eyepiece for those targets. And that's pretty much what these light buckets are for, nebulosity and galaxies. So that's what I'm here for tonight, guys, to kind of narrow that down a little bit, 
because when you go to a 12, the next jump up is a 16. And I've got to tell you that I've been pretty happy with the 12 in night vision. It really is satisfying. But of course, the 16 takes it up a notch or two. But I've never had them both out side by side to go from here to there, here to there. And that's what you really need to do in order to make an accurate assessment. So I'm going to try to take some photographs with the camera and show you the difference. Okay, so stay tuned and thanks for tuning in for Dakota Starry Nights. See you in a bit. Okay, so here we are uh, on the Dumbbell M27 and we're using the Hubble Optics UL16 and a Panoptic Teleview 35mm. Ooh, did you see that meteor go through there? <laughs> well, anyway, so that's what it looks like. Uh, you can make out the lobes top and bottom there somewhat. So I think that gives a pretty good representation of uh, what to expect when you're looking at it through a PBS 14 and a 16 inch of aperture. Okay, let's move over to the 12 and see what we get there. And we're going to keep the video settings the same, the ISO and the uh, shutter speed. So here we got the dumbbell in the Explorer Scientific Ultralight 12. But again, the image scale on the 16 is a little bit better. But this is by no means uh, disappointing. So here we are in the 16. We're going with white light now. And I've got a batter high contrast filter in the bottom of the pan. And filming it, it blows out the core, but uh, visually you can resolve stars clear into the core. It actually looks better than what you're seeing there because this is kind of blown out a little bit. But yeah, so that's it in the 16 inch uh, Hubble. So now we're looking through the... Oh, another satellite. It's amazing. Uh, we're looking through this Explorer Scientific 12. Shooting the video, they kind of look the same. But looking through the eyepiece, you notice a difference. And the difference, really, from what I'm finding tonight when you're using a night vision, uh, you get a better image scale through the 16, allowing you to see just a little bit more detail. But the uh, PBS-14 is an equalizer and kind of makes the brightness similar. Okay, came back to the lagoon, and I dialed the PVS-14 back a little bit, you know, and decreased the gain. And I can definitely see more dark nebulosity and detail than I could in the 12. So the images may be as bright but you see more detail in the 16. I, you know, I, to, to, to be really be honest, I mean, I was kind of puzzled myself when I first looked at that. And I think the PVS-14 being jacked up a little bit, you know, was giving the impression that they were both brightness was the same. But, you know, this is not just about brightness. This is also about the detail you can pick out. And you can see more nodding and uh, just more sculpting in the 16. It doesn't mean, you see, if you look at the top, you could see like those bellowing dark nebulosity coming down into the core. Uh, that looks really good visually. The camera is just not picking it up all that great, but there, there, you could, you, you see the, the layers as you move in towards the core. Uh, you've got the front layer, second layer, and then another layer, and then the core. And that's that's what's cool about the the 16 is the resolution. You know, oh, look at that, another satellite. Whoa, what's going on tonight? Cool. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely think there's a there's a difference here. A better resolution, more detail. 
but as far as the overall you know look it, they're both satisfying okay they are both satisfying it's just a 16 gives you a little more detail from what I can see here all right well I'm gonna go back now to the uh, 12 okay so there it is in the 12 and the video makes it about as bright as the 16 but actually it's a little dimmer but guys not a whole lot dimmer but definitely dimmer and you know it's your call I mean you decide now granted this is a very bright get that focused oh that's nice and crisp this is a really bright target so maybe it's not a good indication on how uh, these two compare but hey you know you be the judge I think it's fair to say that the PBS 14 kind of like equalizes them you know when you have the PBS 14 you might not notice the difference now maybe if we were doing just strictly visual then maybe you'll see a little bit of advantage there I got it on the core now and you can see that open cluster there on the right but I got to tell you in the 12 that thing looks sweet with the PBS 14 I'd be I'd be totally happy with that I wouldn't have a problem with it whatsoever okay Well, we're here at the Hidden Valley Observatory run by the Black Hills Astronomical Society getting ready for a workshop tonight on the different types of refractors and mounts to be used out there. Quite a selection we have. If you were wondering why I did night vision, it's because there's not enough light uh, to create a video without night vision. So that's why I did that. So before I go, I'd like to ask that if you have something you'd like to share with the community, some of your own experiences with a 12 and a 16, don't be bashful. Post them on there. We all learn from each other. So that's the best thing about this hobby is we're all sharing each other's experiences and getting a little bit better each time because of it. So until next time, clear skies and keep a polar line. Well, welcome to the Black Hills Astronomical Society Hidden Valley Observatory. Uh, we've been here for quite a while, more than 50 years. I know some of you are just discovering us.